welcome to the Gadget Show Web TV, your daily dose of tech and your guide to the gadgets that have been rocking our world for the last seven days. Today it's time for John to cast his critical eye over one of the latest tech releases in his first look. This is Sony's new SLT A55, launched this autumn, I've just got my hands on it to play with, and it looks like a digital SLR, but it isn't, because inside there is a translucent mirror. Now, on a conventional digital SLR, there's a mirror there which isn't translucent, it obviously normally has a lens in front of it, it takes the light coming in through the lens, reflects it up through a pentaprism or pentamirror, so you can see what you're about to shoot through the optical viewfinder. And then when you take your shot, the mirror flips up out of the way, exposing the sensor. Trouble is, as it does that, it also blocks the phase detection autofocus sensors, which give a digital SLR such quick and accurate focus. And when you're in live view or shooting video, the mirror is flipped up, so you can't focus so quickly. The A55 gets round this problem with its translucent mirror. Now, the mirror on the A55 is actually fixed and 30% of the light gets reflected off it up to the autofocus sensors in there. 70% of the light goes through the mirror onto the uh, sensor behind and uh, this gives you your live view image in the viewfinder or on the screen at the back of the camera and also is the light which gives you the actual exposure when you take the picture. The advantage of this is that you can achieve phase detection fast autofocus at the same time as taking a picture or shooting a video. That's the theory and in practice it works very well indeed. You get fast autofocus when you're using live view and when you're using the camera as a camcorder. This indeed is a camera you could use as an alternative to a camcorder when you're shooting pretty fast moving action. And you get the benefits of the larger sensor in terms of the image quality and a lack of depth of field if that's what you're after. There are a couple of drawbacks though. One, you don't get an optical viewfinder. What you see through there essentially is what you see on the live view screen. Though it is a very large detailed image for an electronic viewfinder and also you can get a lot of extra information on it as well. For example, there's a, there's a good sort of electronic spirit level which works in two dimensions so you can check that your shots are perfectly straight. The other drawback is that that translucent mirror is there all the time as a barrier between what you're shooting and what you're recording on the sensor. So clearly there's scope for additional flare, ghosting problems of that sort. Now in practice, I didn't find this a problem. Only on a couple of instances I got sort of unusual bits of flare when shooting into light that I thought just might be caused by the translucent mirror. Certainly, I don't think it's going to be a problem 99% of the time. The rest of the camera is pretty good too. There's a 16.2 megapixel sensor that delivers excellent colours and strong results in low light. There's built-in GPS, which works very well. You've got all of the interesting modes that you tend to get on Sony's compact cameras, like the sweet panorama mode, the high dynamic range mode, and the twilight mode, all of which are very useful. On the negative side, you don't get quite so much manual control over the video as you get uh, with Canon's digital SLRs and like them, there are also some overheating problems with the sensor when you're doing very long shots. I found after about 17 minutes or so I got a little thermometer symbol warning me that the sensor was overheating so it could be a problem if you want to shoot a whole football match for example. In short though, I think it's a great alternative to a traditional enthusiast level digital SLR. Indeed, choosing between this and something like Nikon's D7000 or Canon's EOS 60D is something that would be very difficult. I think you're likely to go for the Nikon for maximum image quality, the Canon for most control over your video, and this if you fancy a more camcorder-like approach to shooting video and indeed because it's very competitively priced. Whatever, it's great to have more choice and more innovation at this level of the market.